Welcome to Netlink Daily. Today's episode is coming to you straight from the moon. And the only real difference is that, well, gravity is a little bit less than it is down on planet Earth. Which is why I'm not gonna jump, because if I did, I would disappear right out of the frame like this. Ah! And then hopefully you can freeze frame and lift me out. Or not. I'm not gonna do that. So AMD had their Q2 earnings call today and revealed some new details about their upcoming products. They've apparently taped out their first chips using FinFET transistors, which means the design is pretty much finalized. The chips in question are likely to be the company's first high-powered CPU in quite some time. The company also revealed that the R9 Nano, the 19 centimeter long graphics card with a Fiji GPU and HBM memory, will apparently launch mid-August, although whether AMD has enough stock for everyone to realize that it's launched is another question altogether. Windows 10, speaking of launching, is launching in a couple of days. So we're starting to see new products designed for the new OS popping out of the woodwork. Sources in the industry supply chain, the industry supply chain, is that a thing? Well, okay, have told DigiTimes that Microsoft plans to release a new Surface product in October featuring Skylake processor and uh, presumably Windows 10. Is it the new Surface Pro 4? Will Microsoft finally get it like exactly right? I mean, the Surface Pro 3 is pretty good by and large, but will they perfect it even further? If not, you can always go with one of Acer's newly announced Cloud Books, the inexpensive line of laptops that will run Windows 10 and be available in 11 and 14 inch sizes with prices starting at 169. Now they're obviously meant to compete with Chromebooks. I mean, the name, it even starts with the C and ends with books. Like, you know, complete books which actually sounds more like an accounting software, but don't worry too much about that. But can CloudBooks stand up to that kind of processing power? It says to stare at the screen and try not to laugh, but I must have missed the joke. Speaking of missing the joke, Apple and Samsung, they don't have much of a sense of humor about each other, do they? Well, they're putting their bitter rivalry aside to battle one of the greatest scourges of the modern world, SIM cards. The two companies are joining an agreement with GSMA, the industry association that represents mobile operators to implement electronic SIM cards as a standard. Now these wouldn't be actual SIM cards, physically slotting into your phones anymore. New phones would simply have built-in tech called an embedded or eSIM that makes it much easier to switch networks and carriers. Perfect. Now let's just get Apple and Samsung to combine their powers to tackle something a little more important. Say, for example, the global, you know, slip and slide championship. <laughs> I forgot to write anything there. <laughs> Quick bits, brah. In other Apple news, the company has filed a patent for incorporating solar cells onto touchscreens, so iPhones could conceivably charge in the sun. Countdown until 4chan convinces people this is already a thing starting three weeks ago. Tesla announced a new single motor 70 kilowatt hour model S going for 70,000 bucks. A ludicrous speed update for the P85D and a new 90 kilowatt hour battery option for new and existing Model S owners. IBM unveiled the Watson Tone Analyzer, a tool that lets their cognitive computing system grade your writing for its tone, like how agreeable or negative it is, and offer suggestions to change it. And Case Labs has issued a formal apology for accusing Thermaltake of stealing their case designs. Because as we all know, there's only so many ways you can make a metal and plastic box. At least that's what the lawyers tell someone in this case, presumably. News sources for all of today's stories can be found in the forum post linked in the video description. Fire poll. Hey, want to enter and win some prizes and help Canada build a stronger internet? I knew you did. Classic you, you. Basically, the Canadian Internet Registration Authority, or CIRA, is running performance tests to gather data about the network speeds that are out there. You can help them by taking the test, and your anonymous speed data will contribute to new initiatives to strengthen the Canadian Internet. Plus, you could win awesome prizes like an MSI GT72 Dominator Pro G-Sync Gaming Notebook and an ASUS RTAC 3200 Tri-Band Wireless Router. So click here! or the link in the video description for more details. And it should be obvious at this point, but the contest is only open to Canadian residents. Yeah, I know, that's the worst, but it's, it's Canadian internet. We don't need your Swedish internet test around here.
along with your Swedish furniture. Actually, we do need that. It's very affordable. So that's it for NetLink Daily, guys. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos like this from NCIX. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have to go to my sensual massage appointment live on the WAN show, which would make more sense if I'd read the intro that Keyes had written, which I never do. So I don't know why he makes jokes in the conclusion that relate back to the intro. Sometimes you do. Sometimes I do, but never when you expect it. Curse you, Linus!